Welcome back to the channel. My name is Chelsea. And I'm Morgan. We are with Maintain Me Senior Services. And today we're going to be talking about a topic that we have all the time, all day, every day. And that is, how do I know when my loved one, my parent, my spouse can no longer care for themselves at home? And we're going to give you 10 different things. Some of them are ten. like, yeah, 10, 10, <laughs> ten, 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 different, right? 10 different things that you can look for. Uh, whether it's yourself or your loved one. And some of them are kind of early identifiers. They are not in order of that, but some are early identifiers, some are a little bit later, but we did do 10 different ones for you. And the first one being personal hygiene. Personal hygiene. If you, you know your loved one, you know your parent, you know yourself. If you're starting to recognize that every time you visit, the person you visit is in the same clothes. Um, perhaps they're not shaven, perhaps it's clear they haven't brushed their teeth. You all know, you don't need me to tell you what personal hygiene is. Um, but if you can kind of notice, huh, that seems a little bit off from what I've known this person to be for many years, that's a sign that something's not going well with them caring for themselves. Yeah, especially if it's yourself, if you are dreading doing personal, dreading the shower and you're trying to oh. do less things because you're like, oh, it's just a lot of work or you have to get yourself talked into going to take a shower. Like those are early identifiers. If you're looking for yourself of like, this obviously is becoming harder for me. So, you know, if you're not ad Great admiring point. it from somebody or from the outside view, but you're kind of like, oh, I'm fine with, you know, personal hygiene, but you're like, oh yeah, I do kind of avoid that whole process because it's a lot. That's some way to look for yourself. I haven't done laundry in a month. Right. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I almost fall into that. So I'm a little hesitant to say that, but yes, laundry is hard as it is. So if you're starting to slip on that thing for sure, and it's starting to show in your clothing, the second thing is going to be trips and falls. Now this one is loaded however if you've yep. never fallen before uh, this could be a number of things it could be your environment you have rugs and you're you're starting to you know decline functionally um, it could be medical like say you have orthostatic hypotension and you're going from sitting down to standing and it's too much and then you will fall uh, it could be let's see what are some other examples of dehydration falls? dehydration low blood sugar yeah it could be a number of different things but if you have not fallen in your home and it wasn't something even some of the silly things are early identifiers that this is becoming a harder thing for you at home. And the least thing that we should do is have somebody come out and assess your home for safety and make sure that we're putting grab bars in place. But it is an early identifier that there might be something else going on that could, you know, make being at home, you know, uh, less of an option very quickly. So we need to look at that and we need to identify the problem and make sure this isn't something that's going to be an ongoing problem that could potentially make it to our home is not an option because of maybe an injury. Yeah, that would be the concern. Yeah. Um, number three, so weight loss um, is preparing grocery or preparing a meal very challenging. Are you noticing dishes stacking up in the sink? Um, is the idea of going to the grocery store and getting a meal, preparing it and cleaning up after it too daunting mm -hmm. so that it's easier to just get some peanut butter and crackers that you know you have in the cupboard and have a little snack because you're not really that hungry anyway right. and this behavior over even a couple weeks or a month of time you'll start to notice weight loss in yourself your clothes fitting differently you'll definitely notice weight loss especially in someone's face um, of a loved one or someone that you see more frequently you'll just notice something is a little bit off and weight loss um, especially older adults, anybody over 65, not anybody, many people over 65, your doctor will recommend you actually start to gain a little yeah. bit of weight. So we don't want to go the other direction when you start to get older because it's very hard to maintain your, um, your muscles and everything else that goes along with the nourishment. We do see commonly that people will go from you know, cooking really glorious meals to then having to change to something like Meals on Wheels or more frozen food. That's okay if that's where you're at. However, if you are still losing weight after you've transitioned to a more convenient option, I do think that's something to note that maybe Definitely. that's not a good option for you, uh, especially if you you know did always have big family meals and now you're not doing that and the, the other ones are not meeting your body's need after, after you having that for so long because then you can go back into an assisted living or an even independent living and start getting those more better robust meals. Uh, that maybe that frozen meal isn't going to give you the nutrients that your body particularly needs. Greater variety, less salt, packaged meals are not 
Um, they're not bad, but they're not uh, they're not a staple. They're not a foundation. So and there's only so many, so it gets a little boring. And yeah, to take out some like fun around food. Yeah, yeah. Okay, the third thing is going to be bills slipping and or mail piling up. So we see this a lot. We'll go in for a basic needs assessment just to help identify, you know, where are you in the aging process and what what is hard and how can we help you fill in the blanks. One thing we'll see, and one of the first things we see is oh, the bills are piling up, or we'll see mail just like everywhere, an unopened mail. Um, and that will typically you know, be an early identifier that maybe there's some cognitive things going on or that the management of that has become overwhelming um, and that maybe even just going through it is daunting. Like that, that is a really good sign that there might be an underlying you know, medical, I mean, a mental illness or cognitive impairment that we need to at least address, so. Anything else on that? No, I think that's pretty self-explanatory. Yeah. Um, okay, so number five, uh, home, home chores are slipping. So I alluded to this a little bit with the dishes piling up in the sink, um, but maybe it's also garbage piling up in the garage because the cans aren't going out. Um, maybe it's uh, no longer shoveling snow, which is a very big risk to anybody who visits mm -hmm. your property. Um, I already mentioned laundry. So this yes. is kind of an underlying thing that we can see in multiple aspects of the 10 things that we're listing. The other thing too is I'm going to tie and change a condition for a minute because that's not to say that maybe you're not the neatest person and you're like, well, I always don't do my laundry or, you know, I, I, I kind of am a little bit more of a, a cluttery person. It's when it starts to change that we start getting more concerned about. Not like obviously if you're a little bit more cluttered, we're going to look at fall risk and all of that. And we're going to try to work with who you are and, and try to, you know, create safety barriers. But when that thing, say you're known to have like an immaculate house, like I don't know about you, but my grandma, like you walk in there and you could be like, do the finger, the glove test. If that, if I went to her house and there was, you know, dust everywhere even if her whole you know everything was cleared and everything was good but if there was dust everywhere that would be a slight change of condition that's just not normal for her and so really paying attention to it doesn't have to be a dirty house to have these small changes happen that we can catch early on uh, before it's become you know kind of a problem yeah definitely I think that's a great point is catching early on this all of this is catching yeah. early on yeah. not all of this is okay you have to move to a higher level of care yeah. it's Maybe you need a housekeeper. Right. Maybe we just need to sign up for a volunteer service that checks on you on Wednesday afternoons and right. make sure your mail has come in. So it doesn't, right. don't think of this as all doom and gloom. Right. Um, early identifiers give opportunity for early corrections. And power and, and choice. Empowering. And yep. we don't yep. ever want, Absolutely. like our, I feel like maintaining is in others as well, but we really just want to offer choice and education and you know, independence. And a lot of that is maintain who you are. Yeah. Um, maintain, the name. maintain, maintain <laughs> who I am, regardless of what that looks like. And just helping people say, you know what, let's talk about it. Let's talk about why that's hard. Maybe it could be just an easy fix. Like Morgan had talked about, and there's so many resources that we can utilize um, and go through all of that. So the sixth one is going to be kind of where we were going with this, which is memory concerns. So the forgetfulness, the um, mom always calls me on Tuesday and she's not calling me on Tuesdays anymore. Uh, oh, she always remembers my birthday and she didn't call me on my birthday or always get a card or she called my son by, by a different name. So there are early things that of just showing forgetfulness and forgetfulness is fine. Like we are like, we all get forgetful. It's just, again, recognizing the change. How is that impacting that senior or that person's life? Uh, and is there something that we can put in place to make things easier for that person so they can still maintain the life that they had prior to having some cognitive impairment? And I think one thing that we see, and maybe you, you know, for those of you watching for yourselves, mm -hmm. is um, withdrawal. Mm -hmm. So grandma goes to church every Sunday yep. religiously uh, her whole life, and now she isn't going and hasn't been going for a while. Right. Or maybe you personally do notice sometimes you forget someone's name at a book club that you've been going to for years and that's kind of uncomfortable so you now avoid the situation yeah. which is not the answer but it's our natural inclination if some situation right. is making us uncomfortable for whatever reason cognitive in this case um, then we're going to avoid it and that's when we start to withdraw from life Absolutely. Um, and so that's a real concern when when memory issues are starting to become apparent 
absolutely. Now the eighth thing could be with or without memory things, and this is medication. And and this could be, hey, you go over and visit mom or dad, or or maybe you're going over to a friend's house and all of their bottles are empty. Now that could be that they're in the middle of getting the next supply. However, we don't want them to be empty before the next supply comes. There's a re there's a grace period for a reason that you shouldn't see too many of that. So when you start seeing empty bottles, you know obviously they if they're empty they may not be taking them correctly. Uh, maybe some of the um, the falls and all of that is because their medications aren't being done properly or they need to be readdressed. Uh, what else about medications? Yeah, I mean, missing doses, taking extra doses, over medicating um, for diabetics, missing injections or not checking sugars or forgetting to check sugars. Oh, you know um, what? Also, it, could, it doesn't even have to be that bad. What if you just don't want to do it anymore? <laughs> Maybe it's a yeah. lot. Maybe as you're aging, we have chronic illnesses that require you to take those medications and they aren't by choice, but they are, you know, it's just needed for you to live the life that you want. And you're just really sick of having to fill the pill bottles. And you're like, this is, this is a lot, you know, there are resources to not only do it in your home, but it's also one of the number one things that we do refer to in the next level of care where people can get a lot of those things taken off of their plate and still be very, very independent. Yeah. We have actually have a YouTube on that. Yes. It is a geriatrician and medication management. So look out for that. Go one check too. that out. Yeah. Yep. Um, okay, so I think you said seven, but that was... Oh, that was... That was yeah. Anyway, number eight, um, not attending uh, a change in engagement. So I already alluded to this with the memory concerns, um, but it could be anything of in incontinence preventing you from wanting to go out. Right. Um, it could be that you're afraid to drive. And you're not ready to tell anybody because something happened that scared you. Mm -hmm. Or it, it could be any of those things. So yeah. just changing your patterns or having noticing a loved one, a neighbor, who mm -hmm. does something very regularly, stop doing that. That's going to be an indication that something else is going on and it may be time for more help. Yeah, I personally have a quick story on that. Like when my grandma, she used to go to this like weight loss thing. They had like the little Weight Watchers thing all the time. And those were her closest friends. And I think the reason, there was a number of reasons she stopped going. She couldn't drive safely. She was having a hard time hearing. And so mm -hmm. she couldn't engage. Hearing losses. Yep. Or she yeah. you know, couldn't see, couldn't engage. She was also, I think she knew she was losing weight. And uh, she, it was very dramatic. And I think she might've been a little ashamed that it was an unhealthy thing and that she would get maybe some feedback from that. So mm. it could be a number of things like she was still doing well, but she was, if she wasn't in the space that she was the last time they saw her and it was, you know, you hold up this appearance and she didn't want to be looked at differently. So yeah. it's just, it That's could huge. be something very little, but it is something that little things can make a big difference. So you can still enjoy those activities. Yep. Um, okay. The number nine. So perhaps you are living at home and you have home care in because somebody helped you or you identified some of these little areas where you could get some extra help. So you've hired home care in. Now that bill is starting to exceed $3,500 a month, $3,500 a month. Okay, there's an indicator that um, they're doing a little bit more now than they ever used to be and you are on track to probably need more even above and beyond that. Right. So if we're looking at um, your home care needs exceeding $3,500, a month it's time to have a conversation yeah. about okay is this really the right way for me to age am i getting the most out of my very finite resources because mm -hmm. um, so many of our clients have to be very careful with their money or could i be getting more for my money better value right. in a community setting the other thing too is when you start reaching 24 hour care now oh good by point. the time you get to 24 hour care seven days a week that's too late. By the time you exceed $3,500, or maybe you say maybe you're paying $4,500 or $5,000, that might be too late. So we put these little, these aren't, these are like our rule of thumb, right? This 3,500 is like, ooh, we need to start having, we're about to tilt, right? That pendulum, we're like, ooh. And then same with 24 hour. If you're having one day of 24 hour care, my question would be, why? You know, why do you have that much care that day? Mm -hmm. Is And then are they utilizing, should we maybe divide that 24 hours up into multiple days to give you more coverage of care? Uh, is it being, you know, mismanaged? Or, you know, are we going towards that route of needing 24 hour care every day a week, but you can't afford it and we're using the money that you could be using towards this next level. So these are, this one's kind of a, a more of an identifier that we are, we're getting close to maybe limiting 
the next level for you and we want to make sure that you're making the decision some people will still say that's all right chelsea i want to stay at home i'll pay that amount fine that's great but we want to make sure that like hey red flag we're getting close that you could probably be getting a lot more for that money Maybe. yeah agreed and agreed. then the 10th thing is missed appointments yep missed doctor's appointments missed appointments with family missed birthdays missed appointments yeah. it's self-explanatory yeah um unless you're someone who's always kind of missed those things that won't probably be an indicator <laughs> for, your, for sure yeah <laughs> but if you are someone who would never miss those types of appointments and that's starting to become a regular trend um, that's an indicator that something else is going on. Yeah, and I think that one's pretty self-explanatory. And hopefully Definitely. that doctor would be reaching out. But once you miss an appointment, you could be messing up your meds. You can then have falls. And that kind of will just start to slide very quickly, depending on the type of management that you're getting at those appointments. So, yep. All right, we talked about 10 very important things or identifiers when you need to figure out if yourself or any loved one, friend, family, whatever it may be, needs more care than what they're providing at home. If you have any questions about that, please let us know. A Definitely. lot of what we do is educating on this and being aware and being early. We don't ever want to have to help you last minute. We will, and we'll get there. But our biggest thing is to try to give you power in making decisions and putting resources in place and give you the kind of life that you desire and also deserve. So until next time. Bye. Thank Bye. you.